Sorry about all that. Uh, welcome to the Nova Project update. Um, today I'm going to talk about what we've, we've had new changes and features in Rocky first. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about uh, what we're working on in Stein. And then um, after that, some information about like how to, how to contribute, how to get involved. And then we'll have a little bit time for questions at the end. Um, firstly, what is Nova? Nova is a compute service. Um, it provides the REST API and components for provisioning servers. Um, you, it does both virtual machines and bare metal when used uh, together with Ironic. Um, Nova has been a part of OpenStack since the Austin release. Uh, we had 255 contributors uh, last cycle in, for the Rocky cycle. And um, our latest user survey numbers, adoption numbers, are that 94% of deployments in production are running Nova. And that's from the 2018 user survey. So you may be aware that um, during Rocky, we, we were piloting a new review process um, that we were calling Rocky Review Runways. Um, the basic idea behind runways is that approved blueprints could sign up in, in a queue for a runway. And when a blueprint goes into a runway, then the idea is that the core team, the core reviewers would all convene on those blueprints that are occupying runways, with the idea being that we would have a little bit more organization to look at the same reviews at the same time um, to be more effective at uh, completing some of these efforts that have maybe been uh, having to be reapproved cycle to cycle. You, you may have experienced things like that. Um, we also changed the spec freeze from milestone one to milestone two um, because of runways. And the thinking behind that is that um, since we're using this new review process that we would allow more time for more approvals, like as we complete items um, via runways that we would make room for more blueprints to be approved and um, go forward. So uh, we've discussed, we've like reflected on how did runways go um, for Rocky. And overall, I think the effect was positive. Um, it helped complete some blueprints that had experienced repeated reapprovals over um, previous cycles, efforts like trusted image certificates and um, moving console token authorizations from the Nova console auth service to the database backend. And then a little bit of stats here. Um, these were also posted to the uh, dev mailing list. Um, for Queens, the max number of approved blueprints we had was 53. For Rocky, we approved 72 blueprints. So we were very much more ambitious in the amount of work we were approving. Um, final completed numbers for Queens, we had 42 completed. We had 59 completed for Rocky. But interestingly, the completion percentage was similar at around 80%. Um, and we felt like that's a pretty good completion rate, um, considering that sometimes blueprints don't get completed because, like, the, the, um, the developer might get pulled into some higher priority um, stuff at their job, and they may not be able to like, spend all the time on, on that blueprint, and it may not like, get completed. So that 20% um, sort of allows for that. So based on um, our experience in Rocky, we're going to continue with the runways process in Stein. Um, same deal spec freeze at milestone two, which is January 10th. Um, that's the, at the deadline for as long as we're gonna be approving new specs and blueprints. So getting into the, the new features um, for the ro latest Rocky release, um, we, we started leveraging a new Neutron port binding API to minimize network downtime during live migrations. Um, another thing that you may be familiar with is that volume-backed servers used to um, report and consume local storage on compute hosts, and that has finally been fixed um, 
the new servers will no longer report the root GB usage and existing servers will be healed during move operations. Um, several Nova Network specific REST APIs were removed, so we've been, over time we've been um, working toward removing Nova Network. It's been deprecated forever. Um, so this, during Rocky, we removed the OS fixed IPs, OS floating IPs, OS virtual interfaces, OS FPing um, APIs. Uh, we have a new Nova Manage DB purge command, which, and, and a new option to Nova Manage DB archive deleted rows for purge. And what this will do is actually delete out the information from the shadow tables um, so that you get full deletion. Like it used to be you archive and they'll just pile up in the shadow tables. Now this will <laughs> clear that out for you. Um, there's a new option for Nova manage um, cells, cell v2 update cell to disable scheduling to a cell. Um, this is useful for when you want to perform maintenance on a cell and you want to take it out of the rotation, um, you can use this Nova Manage command to disable it. Um, trusted image certificates is a new feature that is supported as, as of Rocky. Um, Glance, you can sign images using certificates in Glance and then um, on, on the Nova side, you can provide a list of trusted image certificate UUIDs that you are saying like, these are the certificates that I trust. And so when you go to boot a server or you go to rebuild a server, um, Nova will actually validate the certificate um, for the image with the trusted certs that you have provided. So you can um, get extra security that way. Um, there's a new Nova Manage placement heal allocations command for caching scheduler users to pop populate placement um, ahead of a migration to the filter scheduler. So that'll help you out if you're using the cach caching scheduler. You can use this command to start populating placement with allocations. And then the placement service now supports granular RBAC policy rules configuration, so you can use the traditional policy file um, system to control access to placement service APIs. <clears throat> um, this was one of the things I mentioned earlier that benefited from runways. Um, console token auth authorizations have moved from the Nova console auth service to the database backend. And with this, I wanted to show you a picture of like how the deployment um, topology needs to change with this. So previously in Queens, you had to run your console proxy globally for the deployment, um, along with your Nova console auth service. In Rocky, because the token authorizations are stored in the cell databases instead of in the Nova console auth service storage, um, you will run your console proxies per cell. And this kind of helps anyway, like in a multi-cell deploy deployment, because um, that way you're not having one console proxy like have to deal with all of the traffic for your whole cluster. This way um, you'll have them per cell. Here's a list of the um, new microversions we had in, in Rocky. Um, the first one, it, it exposes flavor extra specs in the flavors API get post and put. Um, this is kind of a parody thing in that there's an extra specs API for the flavor API where you could get the extra specs, but it wasn't connected to like the get and the post and the put. And then also um, when you show server details, it would show you the embedded flavors extra specs. So this kind of like closes the gaps where um, you weren't able to get extra specs from other flavors API um, calls. Um, microversion 2.62 as the host and host ID to the instance actions um, get API. And this is useful um, for being able to correlate failed instance actions with the host on which the failure occurred. So this is kind of a um, operational uh, improvement for, for public cloud is, is where um, it came from. Um, as I mentioned earlier, trusted image certificates is now available in microversion 2.63. Um, 2.64 
adds policy and rules to the server groups API get and post. And um, this is kind of like adding the ability to um, have more advanced policy requirements for a policy. So now you can do like a max servers per host uh, rule with your anti-affinity policy. And this new um, availability of being able to associate rules with a policy, that opens up the possibility of adding more and different rules um, as people f uh, come up with new use cases. And then finally, 2.65, add support for aborting live migrations that are in queued or preparing status. Previously, you can only abort a live migration if it was already running. Now, if it's queued up and waiting and you wanna cancel it, you can do that. So st starting into what we are working on in Stein. Um, so if you're familiar with previous uh, releases, Nova Cycles, um, we used to do a thing where we would have cycle priorities, um, a priority setting exercise for every cycle. Um, last cycle for Rocky, we had thought that since we had the runway system, that runways represented um, priorities at any given moment, so we didn't really do a separate priority setting exercise. But what we found um, at the PTG when we discussed it in the uh, Rocky retrospective was that um, as a team, we didn't really have it, like a cohesive clarity of the types of like user facing um, changes that we wanted to land for the cycle. So um, based on that discussion, we decided to combine like, we'll do review runways, but we'll also have cycle themes. And the, the cycle themes are the user facing enhancements that we're our goals for, for the cycle to deliver. That way, um, throughout the cycle, even though we are using runways to focus on review priorities, we still have in our heads, like, what user-facing changes are we, like, working on as a whole and, and help us, like, keep that focus throughout the cycle. So um, they're documented here at this link, um, and I've listed them here as well. Um, so first theme, Multi-cell operational enhancements. Um, we have one of the things that you may have heard about is handling of down or poor performing performing cells. Um, with cells v2, the the access pattern of of the deployment is such that the Nova API needs to talk directly to cell databases, and this imposes like a lot of demand on um, cell databases that previously was not the case with cells v1, if you're familiar with that. So um, to become more robust there, uh, the folks at CERN have been driving an effort to add cell resiliency functionality um, to the code base, where um, if a cell is not respons responding within a certain amount of time, if a cell is down, um, that will gracefully handle that and at least return like partial results or um, a, instead of just like failing to, to um, re respond. Uh, another thing we're working on is cross cell cold migration. So currently you can only migrate within a cell. Um, so work's being done to be able to migrate like from one cell to another. And this involves having to um, do things like figure out how to move the neutron ports and the volumes and all that. So it's a kind of a big effort. Um, the second thing, second theme, we're working on improving the boot from volume experience. Um, you may be aware that people have been asking for a long time to be able to specify a volume type um, when creating a server. And we finally added that. Um, so we're going to, we're adding more robustness to boot from volume because traditionally it hasn't been like a fully supported um, first class feature and we're working to close those gaps. Um, another part of that is the ability to attach and detach the root volume um, and then volume back to server rebuild is, is another part of what we're working on for boot from volume. And then finally, the last theme is um, compute hosts able to upgrade and exist with nested resource providers for multiple VGP, 
vGPU types. And that may sound kind of nebulous, but um, the basic idea here is like our current vGPU support uses a, like a flat topology emplacement. Um, and we're, in order to support multiple vGPU types, we would need to have nested um, resource providers on a compute host because the compute host is the root of, of every, um, the compute host is the, re the root resource provider. So um, we're working on being able to migrate from that flat topology to a nested one. Um, so G vGPUs in flat land to vGPUs in nested land. And then uh, once that is done, then we would be able to support multiple vGPU types on a single compute host. Um, other improvements that we're working on this, this cycle, um, the placement extraction. You may have heard we're, um, we've extracted the placement code into its own repository. It's going to be its own package. And uh, we're, we've been ensuring that upgrades can, can go smoothly through this. Um, upgrading from a system where placement is integrated in the Nova code base to a topology where it is a separate um, package and code. Uh, currently, the current status of that or where we're at in the, in the plan is that we're implementing, uh, implementing and testing the upgrade step in Triple O and OpenStack Ansible. So the, there's folks working on um, implementing those upgrade steps. We want to make sure that the upgrade works smoothly in the major deployment tools um, as, as part of this, the placement extraction. Um, another, another effort we're working on this cycle, bandwidth aware scheduling. So um, being able to express that you have network bandwidth uh, requirements when you, when you boot a server. Um, we've landed some of the, that code already this cycle. Um, another thing that we're looking at doing this in Stein is to move to Keystone Unified Limits and the Oslo Limit Library for enforcing quota. Um, as you may know, uh, quota limits APIs were added to Keystone semi-recently, and um, we want to move to that as the more modern way to handle quota limits and um, enforcement. We're working on, another thing we're working on is restoring the ability to set overcommit per aggregate. Um, that kind of accidentally went away um, in, in Okada when the uh, aggregate extra or the aggregate core RAM and disk filters stopped being honored. I, don't, um, I, I, I sent an email about that back when it happened and um, we've been working to restore that ability with placement um, and we have a plan for that now this cycle. Um, Another thing is adding configuration for the maximum number of volumes allowed to attach to a single server. So you might have run into this where if you, there's a limit on, of 26 um, for the number of volumes that you can attach to a single instance using the Libvirt driver. So uh, we're, we're gonna make that configurable um, so that you can set it in NovaConf um, per compute host to so that you can tune that for your own environment, choose what number of volumes is appropriate for your environment. Support for emulated virtual TPM, which is trusted platform module. That's um, a blueprint that some folks are working on the cycle. Numa where live migration. Um, that was, we worked on that last cycle, but it didn't land, so we're gonna, I think we're gonna work on that again this cycle to try to get it done. And then finally, AMD 7 encrypted instances. So currently the memory of the virtual machines is um, stored in the clear and this, this AMD technology for secure encrypted virtualization would allow, uh, it, would in, it encrypts the memory of the VM. So um, somebody's working on adding that this cycle. Um, cross-project work that we're doing this cycle. Um, 
We've been working with the Cinder team uh, on a new reimage API to support the volume back rebuild I talked about earlier. So um, that will that will help us do volume back rebuild. Neutron, we've been working with them on the bandwidth aware scheduling. Um, there's we have uh, folks that are working on that have a feature demo on Thursday. If you're interested in checking that out. Oh, the Keystone team we've been working on with unified limits and oslo limit and transitioning to that system in Nova. Uh, there's a there's a lightning talk um, on Wednesday about unified limits and oslo limit if you're interested in learning more about how that works. We've been working with the Ironic team um, to leverage Ironic conductor groups in Nova um, to partition. Nova Compute services for a group of Ironic nodes. Cross-project work continued. Um, we've been working with the Cyborg team on uh, trying to design the Nova interaction with Cyborg, so they, um, we've been actively reviewing a spec for that. Um, you, you should check that out in the Nova specs uh, repository in Garrett um, if you're interested. And there's a related presentation on Thursday um, about Cyborg and, and everything they've been working on. And then finally, multiple projects we've been working on trying to work out a, a, uh, an approach for transfer of ownership of resources. So um, if you've had a situation where you would like to transfer an instance from one tenant to another, um, that's kind of, that's what that's all about. And it involves all the projects because there's moving neutron ports, moving volumes, all those sorts of things. Um, there's a forum session about that on Thursday that you should definitely attend if you're interested in that. Beyond Stein, um, these are the more longer efforts that we're, we may not get to get to this cycle, but on the radar. Um, accelerator management is going to be another, you know, a, a thing that we're going to be working on this cycle and beyond. Um, NUMA modeling with placement. So currently uh, we, we have NUMA modeling in Nova, but we're not able to like combine like vGPU with NUMA. Um, we, we need to work on modeling NUMA and placement in order to, to do things like that. Um, affinity modeling and placement. Uh, currently, you might be aware that we have a late affinity check um, for dealing with races uh, during like parallel requests for if, requests for affinity, and that late affinity affinity check can't work with multi-cell and split message queues. So, like looking forward, we really need to be able to model that in placement to handle that properly. Another thing that's come up more um, in the edge computing space is the ability to partition um, resources and placement. Um, this is kind of the situation where you have a shared placement service and you have, say, like multiple Novas talking to it and putting allocations in there. <coughs> Currently, there's no way to tell, like, are these allocations my Nova's allocations or are they somebody else's? You're just going to get all of them if you um, ask for, like, how much VC CPUs am I using? So being able to partition that is going to be required as we go forward um, with edge use cases. And then finally, proper, proper handling of shared storage. This is an old, painful one. I'm sure everybody knows about. Um, we have done some of the work to uh, handle this with placement, but there's still a lot more work to do. So that is definitely something we're going to be pushing for going forward. So how to give feedback. Um, we're we're a very interactive community. We really want um, people to get involved and talk to us. Um, one of the ways you can do that is to report bugs. Um, if, if you experience a problem with Nova, like open a bug and then ping us. I, if, if nobody's responding to your bug, just ping us. Like come in the channel, tell us about it. 
Um, we definitely want to want to hear from you. Um, we're very active on the on the mailing lists, and traditionally these have been the OpenStack Dev and OpenStack Operators mailing lists. But if you've seen the announcement, they're going to combine all the mailing lists soon. So on December third, um, they said the old the dev and the operators mailing lists aren't going to be accepting posts anymore. So it's going to be OpenStack Discuss. Um, make sure you uh, subscribe to that um, before December third and use the usual uh, Nova tag and such, um, Nova dev tag, depending on what, what you're posting. Um, so how you're, let us know how you're using the compute service, anything that's missing, any barriers to entry, just come talk to us. And here, here's a list uh, I've compiled of the um, Nova-related sessions this week. Uh, Sol's V2 updates already happened, but we've got NFE and HPC pain points tomorrow. Um, there's a session about the boot from volume improvements I talked about, so if you're a boot from volume user, that's the place to, to hear what the plans are, give your input, um, make sure that's going to go um, in, a, in a direction that will work for you. Uh, getting operators bug fixes upstreamed, I think that would be interesting. For anybody that's that's using Nova, um, this this discussion is going to be around like how to improve the experience for operators to connect with developers and get things fixed. Um, because I, I think we we could always improve there. There's a session about concurrency limits for service instance creation, and this is kind of about like multi-create I think um, and the limits around that. So if you if you're running um, a Nova deployment where you have big bursts of like instance creates at the same time, um, that would be an interesting session to go to and participate in. As I mentioned earlier, changing ownership of resources, there's a forum session about that where you can weigh in on um, the direction that, that is going to go and the approach. And then Finally, there's an update on the placement extraction from Nova. Um, that's a, a forum session if you're interested in learning the more details about the status of that. Um, definitely go check that out. And here's a link the, at the bottom. I've got a link to all the forum ether pads. Um, in case you're not aware, the, the forum sessions are very interactive sessions. Um, the ether pad is a place for like everybody in the room to write comments real time, um, ask questions, make notes, comment on any of the um, discussion that's going on. So definitely check that out and, and add your input to those etherpads. How to contribute. Um, we have some contributed documentation in our docs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, mailing lists, very, we're very active there. Uh, because sometimes, depending on your time zone, if you come into the channel, there may not be much response um, depending on the time. If that happens, send a mail to the, the dev list um, and we'll definitely see it there with the Nova tag. Um, chat with us on RRC, our channel is very active and don't feel intimidated. Um, I've Sometimes people have told me they feel like they can't jump in because people are talking about other stuff. And um, I just wanna encourage you like, just talk, you know, don't feel um, intimidated by anything in the channel, and we want to hear from you, we want to get to know you, um, so please uh, chat in the channel, don't feel uh, shy. We have weekly meetings um, in the OpenStack meeting channel. We alternate the time um, to accommodate the EU time zone and the US time zone, um, so that might be interesting to you. That's that's a good place to, um, let's say you, you have like a spec or a blueprint that you, you'd you like to get some direction on or get some eyes on. Um, you can put those in the agenda in the open discussion section. That's kind of a, a habit that we have for um, people to bring to attention um, something they're working on that they want us to look at that we haven't looked at yet or that we, whatever, like if you haven't received any feedback in a while, that's a good place to bring it up. 
You can also do that in the channel at any time. <clears throat> help with bug triage. This is a big one where we very much appreciate help. Um, we have some pretty nice documentation like on how to do that. Um, but if you have any questions, definitely like let us know. Um, and bug triage just means being able to take a look at it and like, does this look valid? How bad does, is this? Like, is it really bad? Is it high? Is it low? Like, inconvenient problem, but work aroundable. Um, this is a big help um, to us if more people come and look at these bugs and kind of help us um, mark whether they're um, very severe or not. And there's a forum session on Thursday about bug triage and how we might be able to improve that, that process for everyone. Um, so that, that, that should be interesting. And then finally, we have a Nova project onboarding session after lunch. This is a good place to, this is a kind of like small um, group where you can come and ask questions. We're gonna give you like an overview of how the architecture is and how we do things um, process. And uh, that's a great place to come in, just ask questions and talk to us and find out like anything you're confused about, about contributing, just come, come to that and, and talk to us. Other ways to contribute, help with code reviews. Um, this, is, this is always a huge help and sometimes people think like, why should I re review code if I'm not like a core reviewer? But this actually helps a lot um, if you, like let's say there's a bug fix that you're interested in that your organization would really like to have, you review that and then just like let us know. Just be like, I, this bug fix is proposed over here and we, we really like, we really need this and could somebody like look at this. Um, that's, that's always helpful. Um, getting more people looking at the reviews and talking, talking together about um, the ones that are interesting or critical or um, I, that's always a help to me when people let me know about interesting bug fixes that I may not have seen yet. Um, a, a good one that is a good way to contribute is helping to clean up the docs. If you're looking at the docs and you see something that doesn't make sense or is missing, like let us know. Um, better yet, push a patch to fix it yourself um, and let us know you've, you've proposed the patch. Um, try to break things and report bugs. We, we want to make sure this, that Nova is working well for people. So if, if you found a problem, please report a bug and tell us. Um, scale testing, bottlenecks, proposing, oh, backports. Yeah, so if you're running an older version of Nova and you're thinking this fix landed on master and I, I really like to have it in an older version, you can just propose that. That's totally normal. Um, there's a, that, I think that link is to the documentation on how the stable branch policy works. So um, take a look at that and um, you definitely propose your own backports. And I think I went through that really fast. Um, but if anybody has any questions, um, I'd be happy to try to answer them now. Yes? Yeah, I was wondering, um, where in the release, in the future of release cycles, you see things like um, rack affinity or even data center row affinity uh, going to play? I think that that falls into the affinity modeling with placement, unfortunately, I guess, because that's going to be a big effort. Um, that's going to be a hard problem to solve. But so I would think. Earliest, well, earliest we could start. We could start working on it is next cycle T, um, but it might be even later. And a lot of this is driven by like we we definitely like get a read from operators as to like what is most important. So if we're seeing like this organization, that organization affinity um, rack affinity is really at the top of the list then that's kind of how we choose what to work on next. So, you know, that kind of ties into why it's really important, like, to just let us know what, what are the features that you most need, because that's how we choose what to do first. 
Any other questions about anything contributing any of the features that I mentioned? Okay, I guess if there's no more questions, then um, thank you for attending and sorry I was late again. Thanks.